You have questions about service animals. That's why you found us here. Here's how we can help. Meet Gus. He lives here with this guy. Gus loves walks, car rides, and really loves food. But what dog doesn't love all those things? Here's why we're talking about Gus. Gus is talented, uniquely trained, and task-oriented. Gus is a service animal. Remember this guy? Dan? Well, he has epilepsy and sometimes has seizures, which means he has a disability. Gus helps Dan every day, performing tasks like letting Dan know when a seizure is about to start, so Dan can be safe. Service animals can help different people with different tasks related to their own disabilities. Anything from helping a person with a mobility disability walk and stay balanced, or guiding a person with a vision loss navigate, or alerting a person with a hearing loss to an emergency alert system. Performing these services allows people with disabilities to take part in everyday life in their communities and can even save their lives. Service animals in public places are dogs and can be any dog. Big, small, short, tall, any breed trained to help anyone with a physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or mental disability. Gus and Dan are inseparable. Wherever Dan goes, you'll see Gus right by his side. In fact, Dan's right to have Gus with him at or in any public accommodation is protected by Maine state law. Public accommodation, huh? What's that? It's this. Any establishment that caters to, offers its goods, facilities, services to, solicits, or accepts patronage from the general public. Here's a quick list. A hotel, a restaurant or bar, a movie theater, concert hall or stadium, a bakery or grocery store, a clothing store or laundromat, a bank, doctor office, barber or beauty shop, a hospital or public transportation, a municipal building like a courthouse or town hall. This is Jill. She works here. Every day, Dan and Gus go here to their local coffee shop for these donuts and one of these coffees. Pets aren't allowed here. See the sign says so. Gus is allowed because he's a service animal. And service animals are not pets. Owners and employees are allowed to ask two questions to someone with a service animal. Question one. Is the animal required because of a disability? Question two. What work or task has the animal been trained to perform? Jill, the coffee shop employee, knows she can't ask about Dan's disability or if he has papers, proof, or licenses to show that Gus is a service animal. The Maine Human Rights Act and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act protect Dan's right to have Gus with him while out in public accommodations. And the Maine Human Rights Act also makes sure that public accommodations can protect themselves. Here's how. If you're an owner or an employee of a public accommodation and a service animal is out of control, or is it housebroken, or is it a threat to the safety of others, or is causing substantial physical damage, is interfering with the enjoyment of your establishment. Well, the Maine Human Rights Act allows you to remove that service animal. What can you do if you're an owner or employee of a public accommodation and someone comes in with a dog and you suspect it really is a pet, not a real service animal? Remember, you're allowed to ask only two questions. Question one, is the animal required because of a disability? Question two, what work or task has the animal been trained to perform? And you can't ask for papers, 
proof. Or licenses proving Fido is a service animal. Best practice or procedure is to allow the person to retain the use of the service animal. That is always the safer choice. Dan and Gus got their coffee and treat. Now they are going home to the apartment building where Dan lives, which is here. This is Dan's landlord, Jane. She has a no pets policy for this building. But Dan is always allowed to have Gus with him here too. Here's why. The Maine Human Rights Act and the Federal Fair Housing Act prohibit discriminating against a tenant. This guy related to his housing because of a disability. In housing though, Gus isn't called a service animal. He is called an assistance animal. A different term is used in housing than in public accommodations and different rules apply. Assistance animals can include dogs like Gus, which are trained to perform a task. But assistance animal is a broader category. It can also include other types of animals like these, cat, dog, bird, that perform tasks like providing emotional support to a person with a disability. This second type of assistance animal have also been called an emotional support animal, comfort animal, therapy animal. The Maine Human Rights Act says that a tenant with a disability can show that their animal is an assistance animal either when the tenant's medical provider, only one of these, psychologist, physician, licensed social worker, physician assistant, nurse practitioner, licensed professional counselor, or other licensed healthcare professional with knowledge of the disability-related need for an assistance animal, says the animal is necessary to mitigate the effects of a mental or physical disability, or the animal is individually trained to do work or perform tasks for the benefit of a person with a physical or mental disability. Dan's neighbor, Bill, also has an assistance animal, Tweety. What kind of questions can Jane ask Bill and Dan about their assistance animals? A housing provider can ask a tenant who has an assistance animal about the nature of their disability. Whoa, wait, what was that? Jane is allowed to ask a tenant about their disability? Only if it's not obvious. And Jane can also ask a tenant for some evidence that their assistance animal is really an assistance animal, which can be proved by the animal performing a task it has been trained to do. Emergency! Wait, shouldn't Jane be able to ID Gus and Tweety as assistance animals by their collars or vest? It's not necessary for them to have special ID be certified, be registered, or wear a harness or collar, identifying them as an assistance animal. Jane cannot demand either Dan or Bill provide a medical release to review their medical records, or talk to their medical providers, or pay an extra security deposit, or have special insurance for their assistance animals. Dan and Bill have to make sure that their assistance animals aren't causing problems for Jane or other tenants. The Maine Human Rights Act says that Jane could ask for Gus or Tweety to be removed if they pose a direct threat to the health or safety of others, or would result in substantial physical damage to the property of others, or would substantially interfere with the reasonable enjoyment of the housing by others. So Dan has to clean up after Gus, and Bill has to make sure Tweety doesn't fly into the laundry room, and everyone's happy. While service animals in public accommodations and assistance animals in housing can be complicated, the laws that allow them are here to keep people with disabilities safe and involved in their communities. If you have questions about service animals or assistance animals, you can look for more information here. Maine Human Rights Commission www.maine.gov slash mhrc 207-624-6290. www.maine.gov slash mhrc slash guidance slash service animal underscore housing dot htm. www.maine.gov slash mhrc 
slash guidance slash serviceanimal.pa.pdf.